Welcome back to 5-Minute Fantasy Football, presented to you by the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. I'm Dave Heilman, a.k.a. Dynasty Dorks, and this is the Jaguars episode. We're going to talk about Trevor Lawrence, Travis Etienne, and of course, Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, before we do that, go to Underdog Fantasy, download Underdog, and use promo code FFSGPN so they know we sent you. Uh, I want to look at what they have projected for Brian Thomas Jr. Um, what the lines are, he's got higher or lower than 5.5 receiving touchdowns. 800.5 receiving yards is the, the line for him. So let's see what Mike Clay has to say about it. Um, Jaguars, the biggest news for them is, is Calvin Ridley out, Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas Jr. in. Um, Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley were very similar players, and then forcing Calvin Ridley to, to play outside or Christian Kirk to play outside really kind of hurt them. And so you get Brian Thomas Jr. and Gabe Davis who kind of bring a different skill set to this offense. Um, Trevor Lawrence is projected for, uh, in 15 games, 3,757 uh, yards, receiving 20 uh, passing touchdowns and 12 interceptions by Mike Clay per ESPN. And that's right around where Underdog has him. Underdog actually has him at just under 4,000 yards. It's 3,999.5 is the higher or lower. Um, that's, of course, if he did 17 games, Mike would have him hitting that. But Mike does not have him hitting that because of the lower because of the the yards um, in 15 games and then 20 touchdowns they have him at 22.5 uh, on the ground they have him doing 58 rushing attempts 281 yards and three touchdowns I think it's pretty modest for a guy that does run the ball quite a bit um, I know he's got injuries and got banged up and maybe they try to you know hold him back but um, he doesn't necessarily have design runs it's a lot of scrambling and that's just part of his game especially when they're in competitive games. Um, he's got him finishing as the the 18th uh, quarterback, which is right around where he's being drafted. Um, he's being drafted as quarterback 17. So you're not getting a huge value um, where you're getting him, but you're also not having to pay the prices. And we know the upside. Um, 18 is where Mike has him finishing, but it doesn't mean that that's his highest possibility. Um, he could end up being a top eight, top nine, top 10 quarterback, and you're getting him as a QB2. Uh, Travis Etienne, he's got uh, the running backs at 14 games. Um, he's got most of the work going to ETN. He's got the the rushing attempts, 226 to ETN, 83 to Bigsby, and 55 to Ernest Johnson. Um, I know Bigsby last year graded out as one of the worst running backs in football, not only fumbling, fumbling the ball, dropping passes, but um, he just was very inefficient as a runner. And we could see more um, Dearness Johnson, a guy that I'm interested in. They have no uh, carries at all, but Keelan Robinson – is a dynamic player. He was really buried there in Texas behind Bijan and behind um, Roshan and then behind Jonathan Brooks. But he's a very dynamic player. He's one of the only running backs that played, uh, that actually did receiving drills at the combine. He's got a lot of receiving um, potential as well as returnability. So he should make the team. And he's a very dynamic player in the passing game. That's it's not a Bigsby or Dearness Johnson kind of a skill set. So he offers something different, which I think will keep him on the team and could be interesting for fantasy purposes if ETN were to go down. Um, so ETN in the passing game, 59 targets, 49 receptions, 355 yards, and one TD. And it's pretty low for a guy that, you know, has been a good – he's he's been good in the passing game, and um, you don't expect to see a lot of Bigsby and Johnson on the field based on, you know, what they've done. Um, and he's got him ranked 12th. Um, right now he's going off the board as running back eight at pick 23. So ETN is a little bit of a reach, according to Mike. Um, not too much of a reach, but you know, someone that you're, you know, you're not getting too much value back unless he hits exactly at RB8 or better. Um, and ETN is just one of those guys where it looks like he's gonna get a lion's share of the work, and people are, you know, drafting him higher than these guys that are in committees. Um, plus he's on a pretty good offense. Uh, Christian Kirk, uh, he's the the number one uh, receiver in this offense, 118 targets, 79 receptions, 900 yards, and four uh, receiving touchdowns. That's going to be wide, wide receiver 35. Um, he's going off the board as wide receiver 31, pick 63. Um, I think it's a little bit low. I mean, Christian Kirk is, again, he's the number one, especially in PPR formats. I'm interested. Um, we saw what he did but without Calvin Ridley before. And we just don't know what it's going to look like with Gabe Davis and Brian Brian Thomas Jr. Gabe Davis has been very inconsistent in his career, and Brian Thomas Jr. is an unproven rookie. Um, he's got the you know targets very very closely spread out between the three of them. 118 targets going to Christian Kirk, Brian Thomas Jr. with 100, and Gabe Davis 94. Um, that results in 79 receptions for Kirk, 61 for Thomas, and 53 for Davis. 
And so he's got a lot of yardage going, you know, for Davis getting 798 yards on 53 catches and six touchdowns. Um, so he's the big play guy, um, but it still results in, you know, uh, wide receiver 53 for Davis, wide receiver 52 for Thomas. Um, it's very similar. What uh, we talked earlier about with Brian Thomas Jr., five and a half receiving touchdowns is what Sleeper has, um, not Sleeper, Underdog Fantasy uh, has for his uh, higher earth pick him. And you can pick the, you know, the totals here. He's got five touchdowns, so he's taken the the lower here, and you can do that, um, you know, over on Underdog. Or you can take the, the receiving yards, which Mike actually has over. They got him at 800.5. Mike's got him at 814 in 15 games. Um, Evan Ingram, that's a big one. Um, he's been a very good fantasy option in this offense, and I don't think that changes. Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas are speedsters. They're going to spread the field. Christian Kirk's going to work the slot. And then Evan Ingram does all the dirty work you know, across the middle and on the inside, and that's where he does a lot of his damage, especially in PPR. And you can see he's tied with Christian Kirk with the most targets, 118 targets, and he catches 87 of them. So he is the top receiving option on this offense. And he gets the, the lowest receiving yards out of the group because he's going to have the lower A dot average depth per target. Um, so at 787 yards and 87 uh, receptions, with three touchdowns, that puts him at, at PPR um, number four, uh, tight end number four. Um, no other options here at the tight end position. Um, as far as receivers, I mean, I'm really not interested in anyone on here, Devin DuVernay, Parker Washington. Uh, we saw Washington become relevant last year when um, you know guys went down. But um, you know, even in your dynasty formats, I mean, it's just there's so many good receivers in the league. You can take a shot on those guys, but like I just don't know if he's gonna ever be a consistent option with the guys that are above him, especially with Brian Thomas Jr. coming in and Gabe Davis just signing a new contract. So, all right, that's the Jaguars. It's five minute fantasy football. As always, good luck this season.